Welcome to the church. I'm Brittany, where our vision is to build a church for God around the presence of God. Our prayer is that this word aligns you with God, connects you in your daily experience with Him as we advance the kingdom. As this word encourages you, we hope that you will subscribe, like, comment, and share on all of our platforms. Anyone has watched the show, The Chosen? There is a scene that goes back to the pool of Bethesda. And the man was, I believe he was crippled from birth. And they tried to get him. They took him to the doctors and nothing happened. And the pool of Bethesda, it was stir. The angels were stirring. And the first person that entered the pool was healed. And the man was laid at the pool and they showed him he was a little boy, a, a young man, a, a lad, what they would call him, a young adult. Then he started getting up in years, 20s, in his 30s. And the pool would shake and he would and then the people were just jumping in. They were jumping in because it was people that, that weren't lame. So they could walk over them and jump in and get their healing. And finally, he was, it says he was 38. And it says, now there in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which, in, which in, in Hebrew is called Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. And it talked about the man with the infirmity. And Jesus saw him lying there. And he knew that he had been in that condition for a long time. And he said to him, do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down behind, before me. And Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well and took up his bed and walked. And then the story shows him walking with his bed, right? He's walking. And his brother is standing in production. And he, and he walks, and his brother's looking like, I know that ain't my brother. I know that ain't my brother. And so he runs out and he looks and he's just walking with his bed and he's happy. And he looks and he sees his brother and they hug. They hug, they embrace. Let me tell you, people of God, here's the pool. Here's the pool. Here's the pool. Every Sunday, here's the pool. Right? And here is the best part. It's not the first one. There's room for all of us, all of us to be made well, all of us to be made whole. Every Sunday, every time we meet, the pool is stirring. The pool is stirring. The pool is stirring. This is the place for deliverance, for healing where the anointing rests. Amen. Okay. Bridget, where are you? Thank you. Thank you. So the bridge of that song, it goes... I believe what you think about me. 
So I'll repeat the confession of your love. Charles talked about the love of God. I'll repeat the confession of your love for me. Now I breathe the life of your word in me. So I never forget it. Help me never forget it. Help me never forget it. I go by a few names around here. Miss Keisha. Mama Keisha. Auntie Mama. <laughs> friend. Sister. Elder. But as long as I'm serving, it doesn't matter. Because acts of service is my love language, right? <laughs> it's my love language. And the, the key to finding a person's acts of uh, love language is find what they do well. What they do well, that's what fills them up. They want that back. I really, really, really want to honor my man and woman of God, my friends, my spiritual parents. It was a long time ago. I think it was 10 years this year. And Charles went in the back, and I was like, I'm not going back there. I don't want to go back there. He can go teach. I don't want to. And I was standing in worship. And the Lord convicted me. He said, you know you're supposed to be back there. I said, okay, Lord. So I went back there. I met Pastor Sonny and Pastor Brittany. And they said, okay, next week we want y'all to bring the word. What? <laughs> y'all don't know me. I, I've come from my church background. You have to prove yourself. You got to be proven. And they didn't know us. And they trusted us with the high schoolers. That's their heart. The kids are their heart. The kids are their heart. As a kid, until I was about 14, I spent weekends and summers at, at my granny's house. My granny was a custodian in the Detroit Public Schools. And she would often bring home discarded school desks, like school items like desks and books and milk crates and all kind of stuff. So in the summers, when I was younger, like 9, 10, my cousin and I would transform the garage into school. And we go gather all our friends. We having school. We having school. Out of school for the summer. But we want to play school. Do, do kids still do that? They don't play school, huh? What? It's so fun. And I was the teacher. I was the teacher. Partly because I was the oldest. And they would tell you I'm bossy. But I would say no. Mm -mm. I just know what I like. But I've always loved teaching. And so today, that's what we're going to get into, OK? So Pastor Sonny sent me this assignment in late January. And I'm usually a procrastinator when it comes to writing. Right, babe? Mm -hmm. And my school assignments. And then I get to my dining room table, and I say, OK, Holy Ghost, download this stuff in me. And I sit there, type, 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 type. Now I come in the room. Okay, I got the paper done. But I got this word in January. And I was coming home, I believe, from a church function. I don't remember. But it was in February. And I'm driving. And y'all know how far we live, right? So me and Laura got a long time together. I'm driving, driving, driving. All of a sudden... Whoosh. I start getting the message. I start getting the message. 
I'm like, whoa, let me get home. Let me get home, right? I can't write this down. Let me get home. And I'm, and I'm, and he, it's just coming. It's just coming. It's just coming. It's just coming. And I was like, I got to get home so I don't lose it. And I didn't. Because Proverbs 10 and 7 declares, the memory of the just is blessed. And I was up past midnight, and I was typing, 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 typing. And that next afternoon, I text Pastor Sonny, and I said, here's my topic. So from February until today, and we've heard a lot of word. We've heard a lot of, we've read a lot of devotionals. We've had a lot of experiences. And God was just confirming his word, confirming his word, confirming his word, giving me more, giving me more, giving me more. And I'm like, oh, yes, I can add that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And so the next, so um, this whole week, y'all been reading the devotionals? Mm Mm-hmm. It's been about the word, right? Yeah. And I was like. God is pairing the hearts of the people. The soil is ready. And speaking of school, do y'all remember when the teacher would ask a question and then she would pan the classroom? She will ask, and then everybody hiding behind the person, behind them, like, trying to play Jedi mind tricks. Don't call on me. Please don't call on me. And then she'll say, Keisha, can you read this next paragraph? I'd be like, oh. And I love to read. I love to read. I just didn't want to be called out. Did y'all feel like that? Yes. Don't call me out. But the teacher knew something we didn't. Because studies show that when you read and recite and utter, you have a better chance of retaining what you've read you have a better chance when you're reading and you recite and you utter it. Y'all scared? I I promise I'm not going to call you out. I promise I won't. I won't. But what I will ask is that some of the scriptures that we place up, can we read them together? All right. Shout out to our production team. Whoop. Y'all, the heartbeat of Sunday experience. Thank you so much. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. All right, so first let's establish a few truths. I'm still in my intro, y'all. Let's establish a few truths. Do we all believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God? Chloe, can you put up 2 Timothy 3 and 16, please? I'll tell you, I want to read. It said, God has transmitted his very substance into every scripture, for it is God breathed. It will empower you by his instruction and correction, giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you deeper into the path of what? Godliness. In my Bible app, they have like little clouds and I click on the cloud and it said, the word of God is inspired. Scripture is simply not a book that tells about God. It actually contains him. His breath is embedded in his word. A little later, I'm going to prove that, okay? But until we get there, if any of you are unsure, you can, and, and your parents always had to move you closer to the teacher, if you need to move, now is the time. Now is the time, right? You want to move closer. This book is filled with tragedy, fear, doubt, disbelief, evil, sorrow, murder, death, adultery, rape, incest, hopelessness, betrayal, 
pain, curses, unforgiveness, offense, lies, tears, laughter, prayer, singing, forgiveness, triumphs, hope, marriage, dancing, happiness, births, promises, resurrections, healings, truths, which all ends in God's love for humanity, for his love for humanity. He needed all of that to show his love for us. If you all can please stand for our text. Okay, we're going to read aloud this time, okay? Can you all pull up Psalms 119.32, please? There we go. All right, ready? Let's read together. Oh, okay. It's on the board. It's on the screen. Okay, right. Obey instructions. <laughs> Let me know when y'all ready. Remember this. If you're ready, say amen. If you're not, say hold up or something like that. <laughs> Wait up. <laughs> Everybody got it now? All right. Ready, read. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God. We magnify you and glorify you and exalt you and love you and adore you and honor you and welcome you. We welcome your spirit. We welcome your presence. We welcome your power. We welcome your love. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Let the meditation of my heart, let the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You all may be seated. Clay, can you bring that up in the Amplify, please? 119 and 32. I'm putting the sauce on it. Where my east side? <laughs> east side? Y'all should come to group. Y'all should join the group. It says, I will run the way of your commandments with purpose with intention, with a set goal. Does that sound like a pace setter? Mm -hmm. For you will give me a heart that is willing. Does that sound like we have to do something? Yeah. The title of my message is The Heart of the Pace Setter. How many of you have heard the sayings, let's get to the heart of the matter? Mm-hmm. How about home is where the heart is? Yeah. Follow your heart. Okay. This going to date us. The heartbeat of America. Woo, yes, Sal. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Chevy commercial. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. We all have a heart. Everybody's heart is here beating. Right now, the blood is pumping oxygen and nutrients through our entire body. At the same time, it's carrying out waste. God is awesome, ain't he? How he made us. Why are there so many references to the heart and the word? It's so, so interesting, huh? Chloe, can you put up Matthew 6 and 21, King James Version? Y'all ready? We're going to read this. Ready? Read. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you have your Bible, you will see those words in red. Am I right? Mm-hmm. That means Jesus speaking. Jesus like E.F. Hutton. Y'all know him? <laughs> when he speaks, everybody listen, right? Yes, Jesus is speaking. The Amplify says it like this. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. We're going to have heart surgery today, okay? You may say, oh, no, my heart is good. It's good. It's good. Is it? Let's find out what's in our heart. Chloe, bring up Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. We're going to read this, guys. Ready? Read. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Next verse. I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Wow, right? Amen. Can you take me back to um, 2 Timothy, please? Uh, verse 14. So 2 Timothy, Paul is writing a letter to Timothy, and he's encouraging him to continue in his footsteps. Pace setter, right? Continue in my footsteps, Timothy. Do what I do, Timothy. Do what I do. Because we're talking about the pace setter. But in verse 14, Paul tells Timothy, no matter how many false teachers arise, you, Timothy, must continue to advance in strength with the truth wrapped around your heart, being assured by God that he is the one who has truly taught you all these things. So Paul is pointing Timothy back to God. He's like, okay, Timothy, follow me, but don't look at me. Look at God, because he's the teacher. He's the ultimate teacher here. We're talking about the heart of the pace setter. After salvation, this is one of the most important lessons for the believer. A few weeks back, maybe it's been a month now, my husband spoke about the believer's authority. Yep. And today, you're going to find out how to activate that authority. If you catch it, take hold of it. Y'all remember that? Steward it. And don't allow the enemy to steal it. What? The enemy? You mean he can steal it? Yeah, glad you asked. Y'all remember the, pace, the Satan is pacing? Mm-hmm. If you didn't, if you weren't here, Go back about two months and listen to the podcast or the YouTube. It's some good stuff. Chloe, can you bring up John 10.10, 10, please? King James, New King James Version. We're going to read this together. Ready? Read. Thief, come, set, to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. So many believers use this scripture to explain or justify why they are not prospering, usually economically. Oh, the devil stole my job. Oh, the devil stole this. The devil stole that. The devil don't care about your personal possessions. Psalms 49 and 16, they call, it call, he calls it glory. The things we have obtained, cars, houses, land, clothes. This is our glory because in the word it says you can't take it with you when you die. Right? So that's how we know it's the glory. The devil, he don't care about that. It's all principle, right? Seed time and harvest is principle. It's a universal principle. Because if it wasn't, then we wouldn't have wealthy sinners. If it's not a universal principle, we would not have wealthy sinners. It's not just a word for the believer. They give. They give. They give. And what happens? They get. 
they get because they're on a universal principle. So why would the devil care about you having a car? Why does he care about you having a house? He doesn't because the wicked have it. But what he wants, what his ministers of light want, they want the word. They want to steal the word that we hear, that we're hearing, that we're speaking. They want to steal the word. We get the word in our Sunday experiences. We read our daily devotions, right? Everybody? Mm-hmm, yeah, okay, yes. Nope, okay, they're out there. Get you a daily devotional. Come on, y'all. The word is sustaining. It's healing. The word. Y'all on Marco? We on Marco? The word go forth. Pastor Brittany, she be bringing it. The other ladies, they be bringing it. Right? We got some powerful women in this community. Group experience is going on right now. The word. You got to make yourself available for the word. You have to. It's vital for your existence. It's vital. What's in your heart? Pull up Jeremiah 17, 10, please. That's what he was saying. It's no cure. It's no cure for the heart. It's deceitful. God said, I'm going to search it. He's going to search it. He's going to search the hearts and examine the mind. Because how are we going to respond? To circumstances, crisis, reports from the doctor. Let me tell you. So Friday, my husband went. He was going to get a haircut, right? And he'd been saying, "I need to go get some my get some glasses. I need to get some glasses." And he'd been saying this for a while, but his schedule would be changing. He'd be on nights, then he go to days, and then. So I don't know. So I said. So he said, I'm going to get a haircut. I said, okay, I'm going to find you a doctor's eye appointment. So I went, 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 okay, go here this time. So he went to the haircut. He went to the eye appointment. So he texts me. He said, oh, my right eye is bad, shaking my head. That's the text I got. Shaking my head, my right eye is bad. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm at work, too, like, oh, my first day back, okay. Then he sent me a picture. What's, what's this? Then he, he called me, I think, right? He said, babe, I got a hole in my retina. I said, what? You got a, what? How did that happen? What? I said, okay. So over these last two years, he has had some of the strangest illnesses come up. And I'm just like, I never heard of this stuff. Okay. So this time, here this come. And I said, oh, God get to show his glory through your eye. I started getting excited, right? I started getting excited like, oh, because we weren't in church when that other stuff happened. We wasn't. But this time, I'm like, oh. God get to show his glory through your eye. I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. So how you going to respond? How you supposed to respond? If you got the word in your heart. How you supposed to respond? What? Am I, woe is me? Why me? No, because we went and looked it up. So that means other people had it. Other people. Right? Other people had it before. So I, kn I know about it. I know all about it. What happened? What they going to do? Maybe. I don't know. God going to heal them. 
God will. He can. He can. Yes. That he going to go back and they're going to be like, well, I think I, we saw, uh, Mr. Phil Pot, we saw a hole, but it's not there. It's not there. Okay, let's, let's order you some glasses now, right? Because he can't get glasses. Okay. But how are you going to re- respond? How are you going to respond to your supervisor? Hmm? Or your, the family member? How are you going to respond to them? How are you going to respond to your child's teacher? Or your neighbor? The person that cut you off? Ooh, yeah, ouch, everybody, out, 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 out. Uh-huh, son, got road rage, I just want y'all to know. Deliverance, Jesus. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. My daughter, too, she back there, she got it, too. They did not get that from me. I'm just setting the record straight. They didn't get that from me. I don't have road rage. Or in the drive through line, right? They might have a bunch of orders. I used to work at Target, and... um. It was, it was fun working at Target. And here come the coupon ladies. Have y'all been behind the coupon ladies? They had like 40 shampoos, 20 soaps, 10 conditioners, 12 baby wipes. And they going through, oh, yeah, I got that, I got that, I got that. And I'm good, right? I'm talking to them. Yeah, I, I don't have patience for coupon and no, I'm asking them about it, but I'm looking at the people behind them. They are not happy. They are not happy. But Target got like 12 lanes, right? Find another lane, but I noticed, right? I'm looking, right? I'm at the register and I'm looking. People got tunnel vision. People got tunnel vision. They just go to the first lane. And all these lanes open, but they just stop. And the lane is like backed up, backed up, backed up. And I'm like, do y'all see? Why y'all in my lane? It's like 12 people down there with nobody. But this is the first land you came to because they didn't open their eyes. They didn't open their eyes. But the enemy will use any situation to steal that word. We heard the word and we leave out of here. And guess what his job is? To steal it. To steal it. He on his job. We can't blame him. He on his job. But David said, hide the word. Hide it in your heart that I may not sin against you. Hide it. He can't find it. He can't find it. Because when he find it, guess what? By the time he find it, you speaking it. He like, whoa. When he find it, you speaking it. Chloe, bring up James 1 and 2, please. We're just going to read 2. Read. Okay. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. Stop right there. Anyone ever felt it coming from all sides? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, God, can I get a break? Can I get a break? Y'all remember the story of Job? Mm-hmm. Job was like, just curse him. Please, just curse him and die. I'm tired, Job. Just curse him and die. Let's get this over with. Just let him kill both of us. I can't take the pain. I can't take the pressures. The enemy wore her down. He wore her down with discouragement and anguish and grief and fear and maybe even anger. Maybe she was angry that God had taken her children. Those are all the fruit of the devil. He got fruit. Just like God. Because he wants to imitate everything that God has. He wants to mirror it. Right? So God has his fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, 
long suffering, gentleness, kindness. And here come the devil, discouragement, anguish, fear. On the other side. He is after the word in our heart so he can kill our hope. So he can kill our hope with discouragement and pressure and suggestions of defeat, giving up, returning to our old and familiar habits. He wants to wear us down like he did Job's wife. So we can move contrary to the word of God, stealing our peace, then finally destroying any faith, belief, and dependence upon we have in God. Satan is going in for the destruction. The Bible is not a mere book of words. We read that it is the breath of God. It's living, it's breathing, it's moving. Paul said in Hebrew 4 and 12, it is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. This word, we are to wrap it around our heart. The author of Psalm 119 and verse 11, it says, I have treasured, this is the CSB, I have treasured your word in my heart. Another translation, hid, hid the word in my heart. The heart of the pace setter is filled with the word, wrapped in the word, seeking the word, believing the word, and doing the word. Look how Jesus laid out this passage. Steal, kill, then destroy. It's a progression. It's a progression. See, if something is dead, it can come back. It can. Y'all, when my, my Proverbs 31 women, right? I love plants, right? Me and Chloe, we love plants. But I can kill them, too. I kill them plants. I kill them. <laughs> I, I be so sad. I be over there in the corner talking to them like, what's wrong with you? Hmm. So y'all know we went to Georgia in March to get my mom and we came back and Eve, my fig plant was dead. She was laying, she gave up the ghost. She was just, she, look, she was laying outside the pot. She was just like, I said, oh my gosh. I was like, and I was looking, I said, okay. So I, I just pulled her off through where I said, I'm gonna just dump it. Now I'll go buy me another one. I'm going to just dump it. But then I heard, I heard that still small voice, Pastor. He said, no, leave her. Water her. I said, okay. So I water her. I go talk to her. I water my other plants. I'm talking to them. And then three weeks later, I go, you know, and I stop. Oh, it's a green leaf. Baby, she ain't dead. She ain't dead. She's still in there. Now I got about six leaves on her. Oh, I was so happy. I was so happy. Right? And it wasn't destroyed. It was dead, but it wasn't destroyed. But Satan, the thief, he wants to destroy. He wants, he doesn't, there's no chance of you coming back. How many of you know information is good, right? Information is good. But it can be too much. We can get too much of it. I remember the days when you had to wait for the nightly news. You didn't know what was going on throughout the day. It could be, I don't know, whatever. And you didn't know until the nightly news. You'd be like, what? That happened today? Oh, wow. Yeah, but now it's available every second on the hour. Every second. So God revealed something to me a while back about information. He said, I didn't change the way I created people. 
they're still the same. They still come from a woman. They're, I didn't change them. Because I said, Lord, where is this ADHD coming from? I don't remember that when I was a kid. Where did it come from? And he said, too much information. We're on overload. Our minds cannot take all of that information that quickly. Constantly, 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 constantly. When I went to bed last night, right, I touched this word. I made some adjustments. I lost a paragraph. But I saved it. <laughs> but I was running around, went back. I was like, I need your iPad. I need your iPad. I need your Mac. Something. Give me something. I, this paragraph is gone. But I saved it. So I got it back. But the information. So I laid down right. And I couldn't. The Holy Ghost would not stop talking to me. He kept giving me scriptures. He kept giving me, and I was like, I got to go to sleep. Please, I'm done. <laughs> the information. Praise God. Okay, let's go to Proverbs 4 and 7. Please, Chloe. Because we're talking about information. Let's read together. Ready, read. Wisdom is the principle. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in all you're getting, get understanding. The definition of wisdom, you ready, babe? I know you love words. You mean I love words. Is knowledge and the capacity to make due use of it. So we're going to start with giving you some history on Psalms 119, right? Psalms 119, they say... I went because I was reading it, and I said, who wrote this book? Who? They say it's written by David, just because of the language in it. It is the longest psalm in the Bible and the longest book. There are 176 verses and 22 stanzas. One stanza for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So I'm going to briefly go over the first three, Alf, Beth, Gimel. And our text comes from 119.32, which is the Hebrew uh, alphabet, the left. Is that what I'm saying? I read this? Okay. okay. Thank you, Miss Ruthie. Psalms 119, 1 and 8 is Al, the letter alphabet. It declares, those verses declares the blessing of the word of God. Psalms 119, 9 through 16 is B, Beth. Cleansing by the word. Psalms 119, 17 through 24. Gimel. Enlightenment by the word. And finally, Dalit. 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 The sustaining power of the word. Psalms 119 opens with blessings and instructions. Chloe, bring up one, Psalms 119, 1 and 2, please. What time am I supposed to be done? <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. Th thank you. 119, 1 and 2. New King James. New King James, please. I'm sorry, Chloe, if I didn't give you this. Yes. Amen. And so in the Amplified, it says, How blessed and favored by God are those whose way is blameless. Those with personal integrity, the upright, the guileless, who walk in the law and who are guided by the precepts and revealed will of the Lord. Blessed and favored by God are those who keep his testimonies and who consistently seek him and long for him with all their heart. 
This book opens with those of us that walk in the word, keep the word, seek the word consistently with our whole heart. We are blessed and favored. Is that good news? Yes, that's so good. So I was reading the Psalms 119 the other day because um, I think it was on the 8th. It was our daily devotion. So I went through the whole verse. I, I was listening. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. And I, and I stopped because there was some, some stuff in there that was really good. And then I started. He was reading it again. And I said, well, he started off saying, yeah, blessed, I'm blessed. Lord, I'm going to keep your way. Lord, I won't forget your way. Lord, I trust you. Lord, my enemies are coming against me. But, Lord, your word is perfect. Lord, your word is true. I love your word with my whole heart. He was just going on and on and on about the word. He's, and then he ends and says, I won't forget your word. Even if I go astray, come after me. Seek me out. The song we sang in worship, right? He going to leave the 99 to come for one, to come for me. I'm, that's personal. He going to come for me. He going to leave all y'all and go find me. The love is reckless. That he will leave everyone for me, for you, for you. You're worthy. You're worth it. He said you're worth it. He coming. The heart of the pace setter. Our text comes from the stanza that declares sustaining so I said, oh, let me look up this word sustaining because, you know, my husband loved words. So I said, let me look it up. I came across a few definitions, verbs, synonyms. So we're going to pull up my um, PowerPoint. Yes. So where the word sustaining, we're going to replace it because these are the synonyms. It says enduring power of the word what's the next one what's the next one class <laughs> yeah what about the next one having power of the word mm-hmm and then the next one Whoa, let's stop. Okay. Knowing the power of the word. John 1 and 1 said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Do you know the word? Do you know the power of the word? Do you know the power the word holds? The word has a name. His name is Jesus. It says, at his name, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. What's the next one? Uh-oh, suffering. Don't nobody want to talk about suffering. Don't nobody want to talk about Bruno. Huh? I got a, I got a grand dog named Bruno. Y'all don't want to meet him. Mm-mm, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk about Bruno. He's a bull mastiff. And y'all don't want to talk about him. But that's my baby. Suffering power of the word. Chloe, put up 2 Timothy 2 and 12. In King James, please. It says, if we suffer, we shall also reign. Another translation says, if we endure, the heart of the pace setter is the word. Do y'all see this? Do you understand how important having the word in your heart is mm -hmm. amen um okay what's the next one chloe tasting power of the word david said 
in Psalm 34. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Then he went on to say, bless, highly favored, highly favored, bless. That's what that means. Highly favored is the man that trusts in him. And then the final two, encountering the word and the witnessing the power of the word. You could put them both up. I'm going to stay here for a minute. Over in Deuteronomy 4, Moses is addressing the children of Israel before they move into the promised land. The most of the people that left Egypt are dead. 40 years they wandered, long enough for a new generation to be born and have children. Moses warns them of forgetting the wonders of God. He says in verse 9, only pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things that your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Our first group experience was the altar. It focused on the altar of God. But I want us to look at it as Moses told the children of Israel. Don't forget what God has done. Then don't, then what he has done for you. See, he's done some things because he, he gave his only begotten son for the world. But then there's some things he's done for you specifically. Don't forget that. Keep those altars in your mind so you can go back and realize that there's nothing too hard for him. That he will never fail. You have God's spirit dwelling in the inside. He is your counselor. And you have the great cloud of witnesses cheering you on. That's my favorite scripture, Hebrew 12 and 1. God's word is sustaining. If we believe and confess, speak, recite, murmur. We're going to travel back to the garden for a minute because this is where it started. I'm going to set the scene. We have the Godhead, God the Father, God the Word, which is Jesus Christ, according to John 1 and 1, and God the Spirit. In Genesis 1 and 26, God speaks to the Godhead himself. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So he makes Adam. And Adam was given authority over the animal kingdom and a job. And God had Adam use his authority, words to name the animals. Genesis 2 and 19, God said, man should not be alone. So he created a female Adam. Female Adam. So the man Adam said in verse 23, this is now bone of my bone and flesh in my, of my flesh. And she shall be called woman. He named her. Adam used his authority. Adam believed God. Adam spoke what was in his heart, and it manifested. Now fast forward to Genesis 3 and 1. The serpent said, he spoke words. He spoke words. We don't want to see no snakes speaking to us right now. No. Mm -mm. He spoke words. He said, did God really say you must not eat of any tree in the garden? The thief at work. Satan knows the word. He knows the word. Mm -hmm. And he's not impressed with you just knowing it. That's not impressive. Remember, having wisdom is knowing when to apply what you know. The woman answered in words, we may not eat the fruit from the tree, but God this, we may eat of the fruit of the trees, but God did say you must not eat from the fruit that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. And I don't know where the touch came from, but hey, I don't know. Because it's not there. She's the only one who said that. The serpent said, you will not die. God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Newsflash, she was God. She was like him, verse one, Genesis 1, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. She was God. Eve believed the serpent. 
she confessed what she heard and acted on that belief. She took of the fruit. And we know the rest, right? But God, God, with the ram in the bush. Now let's counter when the devil came to Jesus with the word. He came with the word, right? He, he bold. He came to Jesus. He came to the word with the word. The devil came to the word with the word. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. This was after Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. He was a man and God. Those same things are true. Both of these things are true. He didn't get a chance to go to Chick-fil-A. Because it says the Holy Spirit led him directly into the wilderness. He didn't even get a drink of water. So he was tempted with something practical. The enemy spoke to his humanism. Make these stones into bread. I know you hungry. I know you want it. But isn't it ironic that Christ's first temptation was addressing the same temptation the enemy presented to Eve, their identity. He said, if you're the son of God, do this. He told Eve, you, God don't want you to be like him. Their identity. The devil is still coming with the same tricks. He has nothing new. He cannot create. He's not God. He cannot manifest. There were two additional temptations. And finally, Jesus was like, that's enough. I'm not entertaining this. In James 4 and 7, it says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And even those that have the submission part. God says there's not a lot of resisting going on. It's not a lot of resisting. Because you're walking around, you, you're ignoring him. The enemy is right here, and you're just ignoring him like he don't exist. Or, or he going to get tired and give up on, on, on messing with you. No. He come to kill, steal, and destroy. What did Jesus do? He countered the enemy with the word. The son of God is showing us how to use wisdom. Apply God's word correctly to overcome temptation. Like we read in 2 Timothy, lead us into the path of godliness. So as I was reading, um, listening to 19, I got to uh, one of those scriptures. It was 119, 41, and 43. And it says, let your mercies come also to me, O Lord. Your salvation according to your word, so shall I have an answer for him who reproaches me. For I trust in your word. Jesus answered Satan back with the word that had been written prior to his arrival. Are you answering back in your voice or God's voice? Are you answering back in your voice or with the word of God? I wanted to take you back because I wanted you to get a visual of the word in action. The heart of the pace setter is filled with the word of God and it is confessed, uttered through our mouths. In Romans 10 and 5, this passage explains while works of the law, is that's all you're going to get. It, it, it's it. You just get those works. That's the limitation of the law. The law of Moses was about performing tasks to gain or sustain a right standing with him. But Jesus Christ fulfilled that. Jesus said, greater things you will do, and that is through him. Chloe, can you bring up uh, verse 8, please? Romans 10, verse 8. Amen. Thank you. 
So verse 8 says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. It says if we confess the word of faith that the enemy, the devil, the thief, the father of lies wants to steal. It says if we confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For it was with the heart that man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's how we all came to Christ. We believe the word of faith. We confessed it. So those of you that are here today and you've never made that confession, you will get an opportunity. Man, if the word tells us belief in our heart with confession causes us to be saved, why did we stop confessing the word? Why? Why did you stop? Why did you stop confessing it? Why did you stop uttering it? Why did you stop meditating it? The heart of the pace setter has the word in their heart. Not only they are confessing the word over their life, their family lives, their circumstances and situations. I want my children to stand up. My favorite scripture, I pray over them all the time. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 54. It says, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Were you taught in the Lord? Did I take you to Sunday school? Did I take you to church? Did I take you to midweek? Did I take you to night service? Did I take you to choir rehearsal? Did I take you to revivals? Did I take you to conventions? Y'all can sit down. So if with my eyes, they're not in peace. It doesn't matter. Because the word says, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. I confess, I declare in the name of Jesus and the power he's given to me that great is the peace of my children. For they are taught in the ways of the Lord. It's personal. It's personal. I couldn't, I couldn't go and say, I believe Jesus is the, um, I accept Jesus as my personal Savior when they went up. I couldn't do that for them. Mothers, we want to do everything for our children. I couldn't. Chris was five, Crystal was four. They went up there on their own. And they confess Jesus as their personal Savior. Because, yeah, the heart of the pace setter has no opinion. What does God say about the matter? Because believe it or not, God has something to say. He has already spoken it. It requires diligence in finding it. It requires believing, confessing, and my final point, doing Chloe, pull up James 1, please, 22 through 25. This is our last scripture we're going to read. And if y'all have y'all Bibles, I'll read it in the NIV. It's okay. Don't stress out, honey. I got it. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Can you imagine that? 
Now, I know I don't walk into a room and forgot what I was going to get. I'd be like, what did I come in here for? Oh, I don't know. I'll go back out and come back. Okay. <laughs> but to forget what I look like? But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues, continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. The heart of the pace setter believes, confesses, and acts. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We pray that you were blessed and stretched by today's word. Maybe you need a prayer or have a question for us here at the church. Make sure to fill out our contact form on our website at thechurchphx.com and stay connected with us on our Instagram and Facebook at The Church PHX. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday at our 10 a.m. Sunday experience, either in person or online. And remember, we are the church, building a church for God around the presence of God. 